was among the first country which supported uh, the Yasmin uh, revolution, the, the revolution of dignity and honor. And, uh, the Turkish woman uh, is resolute to support with uh, every possible means uh, Tunisian people, Tunisian government and Tunisian people. First of all, I want to thank you again for coming and asking for the sound for us to listen to uh, your story about the which is important for us. As you mentioned, uh, we represent our party here. Uh, our delegation comes of the youth uh, from Istanbul headquarters. I'm a political advisor in the headquarters of the Ahmed party and other friends maybe can introduce themselves. They are the members of the youth branch now we are in Tunisia to understand the real dynamics of the, the, the country. That's why we visit the different political positions, parties, and just moments in life. First of all, I want to thank you again for uh, coming and asking for the sound for us to listen to uh, your story about the issues important for us. As you mentioned, uh, we represent our party here. Our delegation comes of the youth uh, from Istanbul headquarters. I'm a political advisor in the headquarters of the Ahmed party and other friends maybe can introduce themselves. They are the members of the youth branch in, in our party. Now we are in Tunisia to understand the real dynamics of the, the, the country. That's why we visit the different political positions, parties and just moments in life. What's your um, evaluation of the situation in, in, in Tunisia? The first thing was to meet as possible as with different dynamics, different groups. Not <coughs> only political parties, but we also uh, met with some NGOs here to see what, how do they uh, make their own position uh, in this revolution. And actually, in Turkey, when we make a list, when we ch uh, read the reports of the think tanks about this uh, Arab Spring process, Tunisia uh, stays at the first, at the top of the list, list about progress, of course. But uh, after our meetings in this last two, three days, uh, we saw that it is not completed yet. And although uh, things changed after Bin Ali, uh, there is a name about justice, democracy, human rights, etc., freedom of speech, freedom of uh, media. And we thought, I mean, of course, the process has just begun, but we understood that there are still many problems. And I think it's normal because in Turkey we are in the government for last 10 years and it's not enough to have one, two years. You need to win elections again and again and do something. So the most important thing here is have the support of the people. And in the last elections we had 50% votes of Turkey. So you know Turkey is a 70, 70 million population country. In that case, uh, I should say we saw it as a revolution, not a, only a little transformation or something. It's a revolution. With the interest of Turkey uh, uh, about Tunisia, um, we see it as, as a strong interest, and we see that there is like a dynamic of uh, uh, you know working on both the relationships. Uh, did you think that if now that it wasn't the winner of this election, the interest would be the same? This is a state policy. Mm -hmm. this is not, uh, this, there is no political engagement in the level of political parties. This is a state policy to, to sustain their democratic developments in, mm -hmm. in Tunisia and not only in Tunisia, mm -hmm. like Christian Democrats, Muslim <coughs> Democrats. So in this case, we should not cooperate with China. We should, with, but China, uh, if I'm not making a mistake, serious mistake, is the third commercial partner of Turkey. We are cooperating uh, in many fields with uh, China. China uh, has gained a, a very serious development um, infrastructure and uh, transportation projects in, in Turkey. Uh, it is why that this is a state policy. This is a complete a state policy. Uh, AKP uh, is not making the is not how can I say my English? Uh, I'm from Copenhagen, in fact, but is not making difference between NAFTA, Etekatol, or other political parties. Mm -hmm. For us, they are Tunisian brothers. We are not making difference. Yeah, also beginning of the revolution, nobody knows 
we're going to leave the election. Yes, absolutely. Not, but we get that risk and support the people of the Tunisia, not the enemy moment. But in Egypt also. In Libya. But in Libya also. In Egypt, for example, after Tunisian uh, revolution, yeah, uh, they start to directly support the people because they have a demands and acceptable fair demands. But, uh, today, as young leaders on, on, on the uh, on the AKP party, uh, did you have some relationship with the young leader on another party, for example? So, like a, a connection not, between not for, uh, the parties, not the countries? Yes, yeah, not for only NAFTA, but we visit the other parties. Yesterday we visited. We established a good relationship with NAFTA, Congress party, uh, other parties. And, and not only, this is not only AKP who has uh, ties with uh, our political parties in the region. The uh, main opposition party in Turkey, JHP, uh, the, the party of Atatürk, has also uh, political ties even with Ennahda. They are uniting uh, activists from Ennahda to join the um, formation program. As young people who uh, were living in Tunisia <coughs> under the dictatorship, uh, we were really uh, uh, extremely uh, impressed by all what AKP has achieved in Turkey in terms of political uh, economic growth. And Tunisia's revolution uh, started because people ha were having a hard time uh, finding jobs, because of the economic uh, difficulties we were facing. Right after the revolution, uh, AKP's image in Tunisia somehow um, was, I don't want to say hijacked, but was poor, used a lot by a Nahda party. Uh, they branded themselves as the AKP, as the ones bringing the AKP model in Tunisia. And here we have two issues. Nobody knows exactly how's the AKP model. People know 10% economic growth, people know uh, very successful uh, foreign uh, relations with uh, the US and the rest of the world. You know, people don't know exactly what's happening inside Turkey. And, and another, because they used the image of AKP so much, because when Erdogan came, uh, or any other big uh, leaders from Turkey came to visit, 20,000 people from Nahda go to uh, the airport to welcome him. Now there is uh, some sort of uh, association in our mind. And Nahda, AKP, AKP and Nahda. This was in the beginning, uh, especially happening after the revolution, but before the election. And now that association and that image was created, uh, and after the election, <coughs> Nahda has won. And to us, the association still exists. So now they are unfolding the AKP model. And the AKP model that Nahda has branded itself like, so far is not successful in terms of creating jobs, nor successful in terms of showing strong foreign relations uh, ties either with the West or with the East or not bringing us positive exposure at least so far. Our monetary policy as well is not being branded with being downgraded and all these put us under um, a lot of, um, um, I would say, pressure in terms of, is this really the AKP model that's being unfolded? Uh, what is the AKP model after all? Is Nahda uh, that close? Uh, I met personally Rashid Ranushi who told me that the AKP rhetoric used his books to somehow uh, inspire how the revolution you guys made, you know? So, a lot of big questions that we have. And we're really lucky and we, we should have been the ones who came to you as media and as activists to understand you more. But we're really grateful that you came to us and tried to explain to us. So we're really interested if you could explain to us what is happening, what do you think is happening wrong in Tunisia, why we are not yet where you are and have 
maybe some people exaggerated uh, the association you had uh, with them. I get your point about not uh, of course, Chan, your group, but what, uh, what to stand for? What's your position? So you support any other party or you are only opposed to NAFTA? Oh, no, no, we are uh, not no, no, no. We are uh, uh, independent media reporting on what's happening and trying to analyze the political situation. Because you directly uh, criticize the position of the NAFTA? They are the ones yeah. in the they power right the now. Yeah. So the media well, always question the government in general. That's the job of me. Uh, so uh, you have no uh, other political position? Oh, no, no, no. no. We, we, are, we are completely <laughs> independent. Okay, let me explain what's up party in, uh, in Turkey. Uh, before the 2002 in Turkey, there was a huge economic crisis, and this economic crisis uh, also affected political instability. Uh, and during this time, uh, Mr. Recep Tayyip Erdogan, our prime minister, uh, <coughs> found uh, our party with a group of people who support his idea, who believes uh, who about the dream of Turkey. In 2002, we established our party and. In first election, we got 34-35% uh, vote and got the government. And first of all, we focused the uh, uh, economy, you know, because our economy was uh, problematic. And we believe that without economic stability, you can get, uh, you can get not any uh, uh, political stability and political success. So <coughs> we deal with the economy. We try to uh, correct our budget. That we follow the yeah, liberal sure. model. Yeah, liberal economic model. Uh, private, private station, uh, these are try to decrease the corruption. Yeah, we generally focus this kind of After that, we focus the democratization of our, our country. Uh, and liberties, uh, uh, democratization uh, is very important for us. So we focus on the democratization, try to correct the civil military relationship because uh, before the 2002 in Turkey there was a, there was a problem about the uh, military civil relationship kind of autocratic military tutelage we experienced during our history. So we focus this, uh, we amend our constitution uh, and we, st of course, start the accession process of the European Union. The so EU negotiations. We democratize much more uh, our country with the help of the European uh, Union uh, principles, both in economic area and the political area. So uh, we explain ourselves political doctrine, democratic con conservative. Yeah, it means uh, in the economy we are liberal, but in social things we are conservative. Of, uh, <coughs> we are not Islamists, but uh, we, we have some principles comes from Islam, because our culture, our tradition uh, comes from Islam. So, like a just, justice, freedom, you know. Uh, and our interpretation of Islam is much more uh, liberal than maybe to others. General, that's that's the up party model in terms also, of this foreign is policy. Also, we can mention. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and as Jan says, this is also affecting the other issues in Turkey too. For instance, uh, because of the military coup in 1980s, since then there was many corruptions in institutions and created some bureaucratic autocratic yeah. state. But after 2002, when AK party started to uh, revise the economy, then it automatically gives you power in politics. People start to believe you. And in the last three elections, are part of one elections by gaining votes. And this actually shows something. After this, you can start to have a political heaviness in the international <coughs> arena. Because in 2008, we were more stronger than 2002, because we already show something. So in, the, in UN, or in NATO, or in other international organizations, you started to get it more serious by the other actors. Now, if they are going to move a step in, in the region you belong, they start to ask you, should we do like this? Or should we do like that? Because without your will, they can't do it. But what changed in foreign policy, I can tell you, uh, with AK Party, is actually uh, a shift uh, to, to more, maybe we can say, idealist or based on principles. Today, uh, you know, AK Part, uh, Turkey is one of the most uh, expensive countries about oil and gas. But of course, this is because of some uh, choices we made for humanity, you know, because we support the issue, uh, we support the people in Syria, which is not 
uh, which Iran and Russia doesn't like. So this is affecting your economy, ec your economy in the negative way. <coughs> but we can't let people suffer to decrease our oil prices. You know, this kind of thing. We we put some uh, principles based on, and but this doesn't mean only principles because you may have. Uh, you may have no principles guiding your foreign policy, so nobody will trust you, or you will have only principles, so you can't meet anything. And another thing I think is about freedom issue, because here when we met with the NGOs, the human rights NGOs, I don't remember the names, but two or three of them we have uh, met, uh, they uh, told us about the security issues. Uh, in the beach or in the center of Turkey or when they are protesting the movement of police. Uh, freedom is important, of course, but security. So the freedom security balance was one of the sensitive issues for AK, AK Party. I mean, you can't sacrifice for freedom in order to provide security, otherwise it will be an authoritarian state. I know positive, if you sacrifice for authority, and the only freedom, so we would have chaos in the country. You, so you should have to balance them. This was one of also the policies. And about economics, maybe Jan can explain better because Turkey is uh, created from seven regions. And after 2002, the prime ministry uh, established seven uh, institutions, <coughs> institutions named Calc Calc development institutions, uh, to, to uh, you know, if, yeah, to balance the uh, development of the region, because if one region is really developed and another southern or eastern part is less developed, it's starting to be a problem, social problem. So in order to prevent this, we created the same institutions in all the regions, and the uh, prime minister di directly financed it by the support of Erdogan, so it started to change the general economy of uh, the uh, country so now if someone comes a foreign investor or a local investor is not going to for, for instance to Istanbul or Izmir but to Diyarbakir to Bitlis or one to another uh, city far away from the capital to go and make investment this also helped to the economy in the last 10 years we have uh, several human rights organization who are po pointing some uh, problems in the country for example for uh, reported without borders, they are talking about 100 journalists uh, uh, jailed, 600 uh, students jailed for political uh, view. Uh, uh, like the generation, we can discuss about yeah, that. Yeah, maybe, I'm just, uh, I, I don't know exactly the situation, but this is yeah. what uh, human rights organization uh, said about uh, Turkey. So it's something that we, here in Tunisia, are fighting against a very conservative mm -hmm. wing of the political party who in the country. Uh, they they try to put maybe sh sh Sharia in the constitution. They are very passive against ext extremist, as Salafist or other extremist group. And uh, so it's interesting for us to see if this model and this equilibrium between security <coughs> and freedom, it's gonna take us certainly to a situation where when the journalists are too critics or too much involved in the political uh, aspect of the, uh, of the thing, they will be in jail. So we are afraid about this kind of uh, model if, 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 uh, if we can talk about the uh, model. But let me explain that the jail uh, journals. You yeah. know, in Turkey, uh, we have, during the like, 30 years, we have experienced terrorism. You know, there is, in Turkey, there is a Kurdish uh, population. and. <coughs> Minority of them support a terrorist organization we call PKK. So they directly attack the civilians and uh, unfortunately killed uh, during these PKK attacks 30,000 people during maybe 40 years. Mm -hmm. And most of the, these journalists, in a quotation I quote, because they directly support the terrorism and uh, like a proxy war, uh, the PKK against the, our uh, Turkey, jailed. And they explain their self journalism, but they don't have any yellow card. Yeah, in international standards, we can't define them as a journalist. We, we accept them as a terrorist because they directly support the terrorism to the civilians. That's the problem. Right. Terrorists is like a point of view because... Uh, we don't have... We don't have any, any uh, judgment on... on yeah, uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Election, yeah. That's, but that's all I try it's, to explain. It's also there. That's the problem. Yeah, but it's we an organization who also fights for rights, for yeah. minorities. And 
this is kind of problem. We can discuss about yeah. it, of course. Turkey is not perfect. We have some problems. We still try to develop the that process. Is. In international standards, you can't call them journals. Someone can say, I'm a journalist. For example, Al Qaeda's militants for America. You know, or in the Britain now, at least 20 journals jail. Why? Because they try to corrupt. You know, in Turkey, we didn't jail anyone who they are perform their uh, job. But if if someone doesn't matter, engineer, teacher, a sector or student, if support the terrorism directly, then you should of course uh, jail them. Then maybe, that's maybe. Not by the way, we can add maybe two other points. The first one, in Turkey, you know, we have the uh, philosophy of Montesquieu. So the judge is also in independent than uh, the government. So the government is yeah. not deciding to the arrested issues. And another uh, issue is actually, if you if we would like to see opposition to the government, it's very easy to find in Turkey. I mean, because there is a, a lot of media of different positions. And the the some journalists in jail are not uh, more critic about the government than the ones outside. Because if the government decides to uh, arrest some journalists who criticize them a lot, they are not able to do it. I mean, they can't do it. And actually, uh, the AK Party Youth Branch has more than one million uh, young people who is officially registered to them. And actually, they will rebel against the AK Party <coughs> if this kind of thing that happens. Is okay. The difference is actually comes from history, as he said. This is not a new issue actually in Turkey, but because it becomes popular, because something started to change in Turkey, it comes out. But it comes since 1950s, 60s. You know, I don't want to get in this Gladio issues, etc. But it comes from very deep, and it was actually a struggle between the people and the autocratic state. What was the uh, what is the brief summary of AK Party's policy? Why people voted for them is because the mentality of AK Party was not the uh, people for state, but the state for people. That's why the state exists. We try to always say that uh, because, for instance, uh, I think 20, 30 years ago there was uh, there was a court established by the generals after the coup named National uh, National Security Court. Okay. And this, this created according to a, a law uh, named if someone is attempting to separate the state, you can arrest them. But it's a very general law, you know, you can interpret it anyway. So they didn't like his action, okay, you are going to attempt to separate. And this stayed for a long time until the process with EU negotiations. And then uh, AK Party directly cancelled it in 2004 or yeah, three, I think so. Before coming here in the plane, uh, I read some reports about Tunisia, so also NAFTA, and I know that NAFTA is, uh, <coughs> let's say, showing, or I don't know, uh, showing as an example the AK Party model. And of course, uh, we are not telling that this is bad because it's <laughs> our party, you know, so we are not seeing, uh, following some of the policies of our party bad. We, d we didn't say that. But of course, uh, uh, AK Party is not based on Ganushi. We can't say that. Uh, Ganushi is an important person with his intellectual ideas for us. He's a valuable person. But AK Party came out after a process in Turkey with some internal dimensions and external dimensions. It didn't happen in one day. Let's make AK Party. Prime Minister Erdogan was the councillor, was the mayor of Istanbul for many years. So people know him. You know, governing Istanbul is governing like a country, you know. It's more than 70 million people, so it didn't. It came after a crisis, economic crisis. So it came after many uh, political, uh, because you know, uh, before uh, 1990s, before Ismail Cem, maybe uh, Turkey's uh, foreign policy why was one way, uh, only to Europe. So Turkey actually, honestly, turned its back all this region. You all know that. I mean, not real relations with any of the countries in the Middle East. But today. We want to normalize these relations. And sometimes uh, we heard some arguments about, you know, AK Party has a hidden agenda. Actually, this is telling for many parties in the world. But, but it's, it's not, because when we come here, we don't feel like we come to a foreigner country and people didn't act us like that, you know. We feel like we came to a neighbor city, you know, 
and I've been to the president's palace with uh, Lutfi Bey, and we, we saw the pictures of Ottoman Pashas with Ottoman clothes, so I feel like I came somewhere I know, you know, but it was my first time. Uh, the main opposite party, CHP in Turkey, uh, came with this case in the <coughs> parliament, and all the people in Turkey is watching alive, you know. The, here is the same, I think. Yeah. Yeah. With that channel, you can uh, watch the uh, cases, the mazeless, the parliament alive, <coughs> and we were also watching it, and CHP came with this case, and the Minister of Justice, of course, is answering <coughs> these questions. And one by one, he explained the journalists and what they were accused of. And the first one, you know what was it? You can't imagine. Shooting a police with a gun. But he has a yellow press card, actually. So the Minister of Justice said, this yellow press card doesn't give him an immunity to shoot a police. This is only an ex uh, example. And this doesn't mean that I'm, I'm uh, defending uh, politics against journalists, because Jan and me are writing uh, columns in newspapers and in uh, website news uh, papers like yours. So this, uh, we don't have a yellow press card. We don't define ourselves as journalists, but we know, and we have many friends, important ones, journalists in Turkey. And my other question, why the most uh, opposite or critical ones about our government is not arrested or not got by the police? Though? So there is some difference. To understand this, you should very, uh, with the details, follow the internal policy of Turkey for more than last 10 years. I know it's something difficult or thing, so I just want to point out this is this important. We are, we are just pointing this point, why? Because he was living in, under a dictator, and they was using this kind of uh, not recognizing journalists as journalists. We have, for a lot of example, people who covered the uprising of, uh, of the uh, mine region in the south of Tunisia in Gafsa, uh, they was considered as uh, not journalists, but they are, and they was. Uh, this is why we are, uh, 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 yeah, this is why we are very sensitive about this question because as activists and as journalists, we are very afraid about this kind of way to define journalism when uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, depend on security questions, because it's a very easy way to say they are not journalists, they are terrorists, or they are not journalists, they are not doing that. We don't really know the cases, so we, don't, we are not here to charge, we are to try to understand. Yeah. I would like to make two points clear. The first one is that what, what's our concern as activists here, as Tunisian activists? It's not the intentions probably Turkey has in their foreign policies regarding Tunisia, it's not the links between Tunisia and Turkey, at the opposite, I would be glad to see those relationships strengthened more and more. Our own concern is the parallelism that Nada is making with your political party. So for us, as Tunisians, it's very interesting to understand the fundamentals of your political party to see what kind of model Nada is trying to implement. This is the only perspective why we are asking those questions. This nine jail journal is not accused because of the because of freedom of speech. Yeah. Direct it's some criminal things. That's but we try to explain all, all of them. Maybe not all of them, but most okay. of them. For the Tunisian Turkey, for the 10 last decade, was really an example. As people, as we're talking to Turkey, like they did it, why we can't? Uh, the, the, the Tunisians start to be afraid about this association or about this model after uh, that Nahda said, this is our model. And we are saying that they are not really acting exactly. Uh, as this uh, as this model, because as I saw, as I told you, there is a lot of differences. I don't think that one of the first purpose of AKP in power it was to change the constitution and put Sharia on it, for example. Or so it's, it's your job to explain this, not the Akbar. Yeah, yeah. This is because, why because yeah, they have these are our values on Muslim Islamic values. I mean, that's clear. It's different. We have a laicist state structure. But our values, our principles, comes from Islam, as I said. I don't know, is it the this same? This is the case of the, the, most of the people here in the country. This is the... Uh, this is the, the and, and uh, of course, uh, back to your question, <coughs> yes, we have close relations with NAFTA. They are the government here. We are the government in Turkey, and we have close relations. And if you mean you help them, yes, we, we try to share our experience. How do we organize ourselves? How do we... The whole part. As we see that internet in Tunisia is a very important uh, medium of 
uh, you know, influence opinion or to to advocate for uh, values. And uh, the, the 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 youth leader or the youth organization of Nahda, the, the, the organization similar to yours, uh, is like uh, really a very invested uh, in in the internet and had like an army, an electronic army, to you know to respond to criticism to. Uh, to uh, promote the, the the action of the government. Did you have the same organization in Turkey? Organization? No. It's like yeah, a yeah, yeah. people... Uh, we have social media power. I mean. In youth branch, yeah. we have a, a special team yeah. to deal with this kind of social media issue. Oh, how have, many people? We have, uh, we have uh, power. Yeah, in, you mean uh, as a formal and work for or voluntarily? Voluntarily, we can talk about more than 100,000. Okay, voluntarily. In social media, especially in Facebook, for example, uh, our fan page, more than uh, 6 million, 7 million in Twitter, uh, our page uh, accounts, more than 1 million, for example, one of them for our prime minister's one. Yeah, just the yeah, normal yeah, number of We have a lot of blogs, one million, one uh, other uh, flickers, mm -hmm. other social media, you know, in mail groups, mm -hmm. we organize, uh, we have a special teams for it. Okay, and that is like a lot. Uh, uh, um, it's, it's organized and people... They, they, yeah, we have a special department for to organize so a, okay. a network about it. And of course, they try to mobilize the volunteers. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we have uh, more than one million youth members in our part. So we have each volunteer, we can mobilize, that's important. So our team mm -hmm. try to mobilize this. I think we should. Uh, we have another <laughs> appointment. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a pleasure for us. For okay, we will yeah. give our cards to you if you have. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to make them close. You can write. Mm -hmm.